This is a very short video on risk factors to pregnancy and the birth of the child and what happens a few minutes after birth. So let's start off talking about some of the risk factors. Um, definitely diet is very important for the growing fetus uh, and of course Folic acid is critical to be taken during your pregnancy uh, because it's important for the nervous system and sometimes if you haven't taken folic acid you could have an incidence of spina bifida which is an opening at the base of your spinal cord it won't close and a child could have a lifelong disability because of it. Um, a very important terminology to be used in this class is teratogens. Teratogens are agents. They could be environmental, they could be uh, viral, uh, they could be substance use, uh, where uh, it's the placenta can, it, it's very good at keeping harmful things out, but it doesn't, it doesn't keep everything out. So if you're smoking, if you're on meth, uh, if you're drinking two six packs of Diet Coke a day, um, it, it will hurt your baby. It will hurt your baby. You could have a miscarriage. The child could be born with uh, learning disorders. So teratogens are critical uh, to keep away from your developing fetus. Fetal alcohol syndrome is a very difficult thing. Um, one in 800 babies born are born with fetal alcohol syndrome. So that is, those are big risk factors. Stress is a factor. Trying to keep your life uh, less stressful. Um, a mother's age could be a risk factor, um, or a it could be an older mother or it could be a teenager because a teenager may have improper resources, improper prenatal care. Um, and of course, as you age, you become less fertile as you get older. Um, 20 to 35 is the best time to have a baby. Um, and of course, um, you know, back to the teratogens, you could have disease uh, AIDS, hepatitis, uh, viruses, they could affect the baby uh, in various ways. Um, and you have environmental hazards. These are all like teratogens. Um, chemicals in foods, in your water, in the air, pollution, PCBs, transformers, lead, mercury, uh, x-rays. So uh, they're very difficult and you need to take care. Um, you know, one thing that it was always believed that a man could have a baby at any age. It didn't make any difference, you know, as a mother ages or eggs are not as viable, but uh, the reality is there's been more conclusive evidence that a man's sperm is not as viable uh, as he aged as it was once believed. And there was a study where they showed a, a number of um, older fathers had children with a learning disability. So the sperm is just because you can doesn't mean you should at a certain age. That sperm is not going to be as, uh, as good as it once was. Um, certainly you could have some corrections. Uh, at a certain point you might have, have amniocentesis if you're an older mother just to check the fluids to see if there's anything that's going on. Um, people have had fetal surgery while the child is still in the womb. Um, you can have genetic counseling. Uh, there are fetal medicines and ultrasounds, all things to be taken in consideration when having a baby. Um, now, a third of all U.S. births are cesarean section now. And so you either have your natural childbirth or you have a cesarean. And so let's just talk, uh, the baby is born, and, and let's just talk for a minute about your newborn's first minutes. Um, so they usually breathe and cry on their own. In between the cries, 
Those first breaths bring air to the lungs and to the blood. The baby's color will change from bluish to pinkish. This is about the blood flow, not the color of the skin. It's the blood getting to, to the body. Um, their eyes open, grasping occurs. Now, a woman named Virginia Apgar created a rating scale to determine vital signs. Uh, it is important to look at the baby immediately upon um, birth and see how its vital signs are because if there's any issues, you want to take care of them right away. So she created this rating scale. It's called the Apgar Test, and it determines the vital signs, color of the skin, heart rate, muscle tone, breathing. This alerts doctors if the baby is in crisis. Very often it was you know, about the mother, but it's, it, it's also the child. Both of them are in a very stressful situation. So, so what they do is they take one test at one minute after the child is born, and then they take another at five minutes after the child is born. And each vital sign gets a score of zero, one, or two. And after the five minutes, the, if the score is seven or higher, all is well, and I will put up a, a little video about the APGAR test so you can have an example of that. So um, so these are your, you've had three videos for this chapter, and we'll have some additional videos and reading, and then you will take your quiz. All right, thanks. See you next time.